All right, welcome to the Doe Show, everybody. Happy to blah, Wednesday. I never know what day it is. Every day I just wake up and get to work. Hey, I'm Dustin Tibbetts, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. If your current retirement investing or long-term investing strategy is not really getting you where you want to be, maybe you'll keep us in mind at Jazz Wealth here. But we're not to, here to talk about me today or us so much. We're here to talk about your Doe. The Doe Show is all about anything we can do to help you get your Doe straight. And today, I'm talking to those of you that don't have a lot of dough because there are still people out there making their way, getting started, figuring out the finance game, figuring out the investing game, and we want to try to help. So also, if you have ideas for topics, things that you think I would actually be qualified to talk about or we could do some research on and find a good answers for you, uh, happy to do that uh, for you or come up with a show idea. Um, we like to stick with investing, of course, retirement, retirement planning, personal finance, things that have to do with getting your dough straight. I think you know what that means. Well, like I said, today I'm talking to those of you that don't have a lot of dough and maybe you haven't really taken any steps to save money, invest money, or even plan just to save. When are you going to start saving and for what? So Discover actually did a study that showed 34% of Americans, that's it, 34% of Americans are using both savings accounts and retirement accounts only 34% of you. So they also found in that study that 25% of you don't save anything at all. And actually it was like 23.2 or something like that. Not even 25% aren't saving anything at all. Well, you know, your first thought is like, you know, well, hey, people are, cash is tight, man. People don't have any money. But when they dug a little deeper, what they found was that people didn't save, over half the people that they polled said they weren't saving or they weren't investing because they didn't feel like they had enough to make a difference. And so those are the people that we target here at Jazz Wealth. Of course, if you already have retirement investments or you just want some help with those retirement investments, of course, we'll work with you if you're already on your way. But those of you that are just getting, begin getting started, we want to have a place for you to get started so that you can grow. I'll be honest with you, like we don't make any money off of that. It's not like we're gonna get rich, you know, helping people just getting started but it's the long play, right? Eventually you guys will grow. We feel strongly about the numbers that you will grow and eventually we'll have a handful of customers that are doing really well. So that's our goal here. So I don't want anybody to feel like that even $100 can't make a difference. Whether you're putting it in a savings account or you're investing it for retirement, it really does make a difference and I'm gonna highlight some of that today. Now, if you're saving for retirement, we are getting back into the age where the high interest savings accounts are starting to make sense, right? So um, a lot of them are paying 1.7, 1.9% uh, annually just for putting your money in a savings account. It's not great, right? But it's better than the 0.00040% you're making on your normal savings account. So what's the deal with those? Well, in high interest savings accounts, most of them have no minimums, which means you can put anything you want. And they're so hard up for cash right now that they're not charging you anything, no fee, period. So you just put the money in there and you know why, right? They, why do high interest savings accounts even exist? Why would someone pay you more interest than they have to? Well, it's because they take that money and they loan it out for personal loans. They loan it out for, uh, not home loans, but let's just say personal loans. So they're getting the money from you. They're giving you a cut of what they're loaning the money out at. And now that they're able to loan it out at higher rates, right? Personal loans, 10 to 15% for those things. They're able to give you a cut, cover their costs and make a little profit along the way. So you gotta consider those high interest savings accounts. We have a, a ton of customers now that are actually going in one direction. I get good reviews on a lot of them. Uh, I, don't, I haven't really heard any complaints from people that have tried a high interest savings account. One of the online companies and um, have done, uh, they've enjoyed it, right? So no complaints there. If you're investing in the markets, the average return in the markets after inflation, after fees, after everything is 7%. That's your average annual return. So for you to say, well, I don't have enough money to get started, that's the only hurdle we have to cross. If there were no minimum to get started, you would, because that's what we do at Jazz Wealth. And I don't wanna to talk too much about us today, but it's the idea of there is no minimum, right? To, to start saving in a high interest savings account. There's no minimum to start investing in a retirement account thanks to us and what we're trying to do here. So really, it's all up to you. If it doesn't work out and you don't take the steps, it's your fault. If you don't open the savings account and start putting $50 here and there, 
towards your high interest savings account or towards retirement, who can help you, right? There's not really much else we can do. Now you can put such little amounts away. Remember, cash is not king. So in the investing world, in the savings world, cash is not king, time is king. So all those people that say cash is king, yeah, they're talking about like starting a business or real estate or you know buying a house for yourself or something. Of course, it makes sense there. In the retirement world, time is king and I wanna highlight that for you today. So we're gonna use the chart today or, or, the, or the whiteboard here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say someone that is, uh, we're gonna do $100 a month. $100 a month. Can you do $100 a month in your retirement? Even if you have to start with $100, is there a place, like go to JP Morgan, walk in the door and be like, yes, I'd uh, like to start my retirement account with uh, $100, please. And I'd like to be diversified over 100 different stocks and ETFs and things. Uh, let's go, let's set it up they're going to laugh at you, right? And the guy will smile and he's gonna say, well, I think you should probably consider a checking account first. And they're gonna push you right out the door. Go to Chase, go to Raymond James, go to Goldman Sachs, all those companies are gonna tell you to go away. But you need the help to get started, so that's what we're here for, let's do this. $100 a month, we're gonna say you started at 25, or you started at 30, or you started at 35, all right? So let's say you got started there $100 a month, okay? If you started at 35, I'm talking to the 35 year olds today that got no dough, right? They've got nothing that they can put towards retirement, but they found $100 a month. I'll give you some examples in a minute how to do that. By the time you get to 70 years old, you're looking at $165,000, right? Assuming a 7% return, assuming inflation, all that great stuff, putting it in there, $165,000. If you started when you're 30, check this out. If you started when you're 30 years old, you are just at $250,000. To put $100 a month away, if that's all you did until you got to 70 years old, you're like, Dustin, that's the best I can do. I'm scraping, I'm pulling change out of the, the couch or whatever. Does that exist anymore, by the way? Does anybody ever find change in their couch? That used to be something. Okay, if you're 25 years old, and you get started with $100 a month. You're at 350, it's 351, I'll just go 350. $350,000, okay? Now, these are just big numbers. You look at them and you're like, mm, it's great, Dustin, I, I get what you're saying. Look closer. Take a second, just look closer at that. Do some quick math. If, if you don't want to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the math for you. If you started at 25 versus 30, there's essentially a $100,000 difference there. Now, wait a minute. I, I, I mean, I know that math, okay? I know what we're saying here, but let me go a little further. So there's a $100,000 difference in the growth of your account if you started at 25 versus 30. But what happened over this time period here? You're only doing $100 a month. So you did $100 a month. There were 60 months difference, right? Can, can you do the math? <laughs> so in reality, you put in only $6,000 more to get a hundred extra thousand dollars by retirement. So when I see these numbers, that's what I see. I see someone that barely tries during this five year window and ends up with a hundred thousand extra dollars. Think about it, right? What a big difference there. Now look, if you started at 30, between 30 and 35, let's call that $100,000 as well. Is it not true that the same thing you did here happened over here? So if you're like, oh man, Dustin, I'm, I'm 28 years old, or oh crap, I'm, I'm, I'm already 30, man, I, I need to get started. Well look, if you wait five more years, you missed out on essentially $100,000 for only putting in $6,000 over a five year window, right? So, Sure, should you do more than $100 a month? Yeah, eventually you'll get there. But I always tell people that call, or they'll email or whatever, and they go, here's where I'm at. I've got a lot of debt, I've got this, I've got that, I have plans, I'm excited, I wanna get started. I always, I mean, in my head I know, oh boy, <laughs> this, is, this is gonna be tough, right? They really need to max out their IRAs, they need to go for it on their 401ks, but what I tell them is, start small. I don't care. I'm not gonna call and pester you if you start with $100 a month. I actually suggest you do $25 a week. We did a great video on that. But if you just start that small, what happens is you don't have a bad taste in your mouth. You don't get frustrated when the, the money leaves your bank account and goes into your retirement account. You get excited. 
because it's a small, in, not insignificant, but it's a small amount to get started and that builds excitement. See, the game is mostly mental. Getting started is like, oh, I had a long day at work, I gotta do the thing, I gotta put my name and address, and I gotta do all this, and I don't even know what it means, right? That's mental. Once you get past that and you go, all right, now I gotta link my bank account, once it starts happening and you log into your bank account, you're like, holy cow, there goes another $25. There goes $100 at the end of the month. You start to realize how you're gonna get to these numbers. They're not great, by the way. You wanna do better, of course. But you realize you're gonna get to those numbers and it motivates you. You get excited to go, well, look, I could do 110 or I got a raise this year. Let me take half of my raise or, or not even half and just put it in, in extra. Let me go 150. Dustin, what are the numbers if I go 150? Holy cow. And now all of a sudden, somebody that started small ends up really big. Now, to be honest with you, if you're 70 years old and you've got $250,000 in today's dollars, that's not gonna make it very long, okay? So this is a starting point, but the goal is to get you excited, to get you motivated to keep going, to keep adding. Every time you get a little extra money, you wanna think of your retirement or your savings account in a good way rather than go, man, I got an extra $300 here. I'd really like to buy that new headphones and whatever that's garbage and costs too much money. So it gets you thinking, man, I'm gonna put $100 away. I'm gonna go out to a nice dinner with my family and if I've got a little debt, I'll take $100 and put it down on that. It's a positive mindset and if I could get everybody thinking positive, not motivated. Motivated is, is completely separate from being positive. If you're motivated, that wears off. We're all motivated to quit, uh, smoking, to go to the gym, we're all motivated at New Year's time to go ahead and conquer the world, right? That wears off, we know that. We need to think positive about what's going on. Understand the numbers, once you see the numbers, it makes such a big difference. So the same thing applies to savings. Put $50 away, put $20 away. If you don't have an emergency fund and, it, and there's $0 in your emergency fund, that's your fault, right? You are the idiot, so to speak, because you can put $20 away. You can put $5 away, right? So there's really no excuse to have a emergency fund. Everybody should have one. It may have $10 in it. It may have $10,000 in it. You'll get there. But if you don't get started with one, which we don't do savings accounts, by the way, so it's not like I'm, I'm not trying to pitch that, but you know, very little effort to get started. The hard work is actually taking the time to go online and type the thing in there and set up everything, get your password and link everything up, right? So I wanna give you four tips today, four things that you can do to get to the $100, to save a little bit. If you've got a little bit of dough, what are four things you could do? The first thing you could do is take it out of your paycheck, right? Take from your paycheck. This could be going into a 401k. If your company matches a friggin' penny in your 401k, you better have money coming out of your, of your paycheck going into that 401k to get that match. It's free money. Go to your human resources person and say, I want that 401k. I, you're matching me 2% or whatever, I'll take it. Let me put in 2%, you give me 2%. It's fair, right? For everything else, you go on to a Roth IRA or go on to something else that makes a, a better fit for you. But if you have a match, you absolutely have to do it. Think about this. If you have a 401k and this is all that you have, you, you never even call us, you don't call any advisor, you just go right to work and you say, Look, you're gonna match some of my money. I'm gonna put $100 a month in. Think about this. We're all about the numbers here. If you take $100 a month and you put it in your 401k, where does that come from, right? I mean, I get it, it comes from your paycheck, but it's pre-tax, is it not, for the most part? Pre-tax. Let's make some assumptions here then. At the end of the year, you now have $1,200 that you socked away. But in a 401k, that means you reduced your taxable income by $1,200, doesn't it? So aren't you saving money on taxes as well? Let's do it. If you were in the 22% tax bracket, remember the tax brackets changed this year, so they're a little bit different. If you're in the 22% tax bracket, you just reduced your tax by $264, right? So you got to put $1,200 away. Your employer may have matched half of that, so maybe you got 600 total, but you reduced the total amount that you owe on your taxes by 264. 
So you win by putting money away for retirement. Yeah, it was small. You got started. You did what you did. You win because you get a match and you win because your tax rate just went down a little bit or your effective tax just went down a little bit. Think about that, right? So that's the biggest one that I have there for you. Now, take this away. You say, well, I don't have a 401k at work or they don't match any of my money. Now, what do I do, Dustin? Traditional. Oh, man. Traditional IRA. I'm so sorry about that. What, what is that? Uh, so traditional IRA, same $100 goes in pre-tax. You actually take care of it on your tax return. That means you put $1,200 in. Now there's no match in a traditional IRA because it, you know they don't do that. Nobody does that. Um, but if you're still in the 22% tax bracket, you still save $264. You still put $1,200 away. Win-win, right? So think about every last dollar. Think about those things as they come uh, come to you there. So. I'll give you a hint though, that's my best tip of the day. It'll, it's downhill from here, by the way. <laughs> downhill, I'll give you the best stuff up front. All right, uh, number two, uh, no minimum. Work with someone that can invest for you that has no minimum, right? Check us out at Jazz Wealth. If you don't like us here, go find somebody else. Work with someone that says, yeah, you could put $100 in. We won't pick on you. Don't work with the people that go, Sure, you could put $100 in, but look, you really gotta put more money in. Don't work with that guy. That guy's not gonna help you. That guy doesn't care what you do. They're gonna do whatever they can to get the business, and then they're never gonna talk to you again. That'll be the end of it. So work with somebody or do it yourself. Go somewhere where you can manage everything yourself and that has no minimum. Just be sure you have the right investments and the right account type. Uh, and if it happens that you come here to Jazz, great. That's all I'll say about that one. All right, number three. I hate that I'm gonna write this. Oh boy. Earn more. This is so general. You can watch any other video on YouTube and someone's gonna say, tips to saving money. Earn more. Go make more money. Of course we get that. It has to be a strategy because you may find yourself going, Dustin, I don't even have $100 a month. So what can you do? You know what I would do? I know everybody says, you know, go sell stuff, rent your house out, do, uh, what's the thing where you drive around, Lyft or Uber or whatever. Everybody says that, okay? You know what two things I think of right away? If I need to make $100 more or somewhere close to that, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna ask my boss, if I had a boss, for the world's smallest raise. How could they turn that down? When you go ask for a raise, you usually go in swinging, right? You go in asking for a lot. Think about what happens to your boss. Every employee is going to ask for a raise. Every employee is coming for their annual review. What happens if you just ask your boss for a teeny, teeny, tiny raise? You think you'd get it? So in my mind, that's what I would do. I'd walk in there and go, hey bud, uh, just want to get your feedback. How do you think I'm doing? Am I doing good? Don't worry, I'm not gonna bug you for a raise. I, I know we do that at the end of the year. How do you think I'm doing? And hopefully the answer is, uh, you're doing great, man. Keep it up. And you go, okay, great. I don't want to do the whole annual raise thing where you we got to go back and forth and I say 5%, you say 4% or whatever. How about you just give me an extra $800 a year? That's all I'm asking for, right? Have you not asked for a raise in the last couple years? Did they not address that? Go ask them for a small raise. Your boss is initially going to go, oh boy, here we go. He's going to ask for a raise and then you go $800 and he's going to be like, why? <laughs> why do you pick that a number? And you go, look, I don't want to bug you. I enjoy working here. I'll keep doing a great job. Just asking for a little bit. It helps me get my retirement started. It helps me get going. It's better than you offering me a 401k. If you're at a small company, he's got to pay a boat ton of money to have that 401k for you. Be like, hey, I, I won't bug you. Just the 800 bucks, $1,000. Make it worth my while. Give me some incentive, right? I'll, how about a $1,000 in the next two months if I do something special? So that's the first thing I would do. And the second thing I would do is every one of you has a hobby. I have a lot of hobbies that I really, really enjoy. Uh, can you turn it into a few dollars? Is there anybody online that'll pay you for that? Uh, my wife, I hope she never figures this out, she likes to take furniture that you know you get from like these hotel liquidation places and rip it all apart and do all these things and she makes the most beautiful pieces of furniture and then just shoves it in a room somewhere. If she ever figures out she could sell it for a few extra dollars, she might quit her job. Shh, don't tell her. So anyways, just a couple things. I wanted to think of different ideas outside of the normal crap you see uh, from other videos. Okay. So that was number three. And number four, get your dough straight, right? You hear me say it all the time. You can't invest if you don't have your dough straight, period. I, 
the worst customers that I have are not good managing their money and they won't be customers for long. I have a feeling some of these people will just end up going away, taking money out of their accounts because they can't seem to get their monthly finances in order and I'll do everything I can. I give you every piece of software, every piece of advice, every phone call, email that I can, but if you can't get your dough straight and figure out where your money is going, you're, you're gonna be in big trouble. Simple as that. There's nothing I can do. Uh, I look forward to the day where somebody leaves me a bad review and says, he didn't help me get my dough straight. And I'm going to post back as a reply every email, every comp communication that we've had to show I did everything I could. If you won't pull the trigger, if you won't use something, like even down to a spreadsheet, use a freaking spreadsheet. It's free on Google, right? You get the things for free. If you won't do it, there's nothing you can do. So you got to know where your money's going. Technology these days will do it for you. There's free apps out there. Be careful. They sell your information. Uh, our customers get nest egg. We're constantly trying to improve that. Does all the budgeting right in there for you. Just link your accounts. They'll show you where your money's going, right? Simple as that. But if you have to do it manually, use a spreadsheet. Just type it out. And you know how you do it, by the way? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this for you. You start by going constants. Right, that's the first group of cells. These are your constant things, your mortgage payment, your car payment, whatever you have. Then you go and you make another column, variables, right? You guys doing this now? Variables are gonna be things like gas, groceries, things that you sort of overestimate what you'll pay for and then eventually it comes in lower, hopefully, right? And then you go down here and you go income. Simple, right? Your income, your husband's income, uh, your spouse's income, whatever you got, rental income, doesn't matter, anything you've got going on. Boom, you got a budget. Then what you do is you say, take the constants and the variables, add them all up, right? Subtract it from my income, and down here, give me a total. Tell me where my dollars are going. Just like that, you have your dough straight, right? And you'd be surprised, it's actually kind of fun. So be sure to uh, take advantage of that. Tell uh, old Google I sent you to use the spreadsheets or something. So that's it, that's really all I have for you today. Very, 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 very important tips. Uh, but hey, you know, $100 makes a big difference, okay? So pay attention. <laughs> all right, what if you start at 20? If you start at 20, you're gonna kill it, by the way, Hayden. If you're 20 years old and you get going, there's almost no wrong you can do. Be as aggressive as possible. Invest in the most aggressive position that you can. When the market falls, you laugh at the market and you continue buying. And remember this towel here. The markets recover 100% of every decline 100% of the time. Don't freak out. Thank you guys for the comments there, by the way. Uh, you'd also consider how long it is until you vest. Uh, that is becoming more and more popular, Nicole. That is something to look at. Yep. They took it away for a while. Most people were vested right away or a year. Now it's going back up. I'm seeing two to three years uh, to be 100% vested. You've got five years there. Yeah, that could be. I haven't seen a five year yet, but uh, you know, hey, it's still free money, right? Yeah, you said it there too. It's still free money. You got to do it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, no, you got it. Perfect. You guys got it. You guys got it. I love that, James. Nice. <laughs> okay, well, that's it for the Doe Show. We will be back um, at 5 o'clock to do the stock market update. If you were in our candlestick class last night, if you're one of our customers and you happen to watch that, take a look at the market today. Do we not see exactly what I was talking about last night, the PowerPoints, exactly what I was showing? Is it not happening right now in this very day? That is so cool that what we talked about last night, you're able to see it happen. Go look at the stock market today. If you miss it or you want that update, I'll be back at five o'clock, of course, to do the stock market update. I appreciate every one of you guys watching. If I've helped you in any way, hit the subscribe button, turn the bell on. That'll let you know when we come back and go live later and um, keep your dough straight, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Why should you choose JazzWealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.